Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Today, Apple's first high-performance processor gets benchmarked, NVIDIA is freaking out, the RX 6000 feature could be used in the RTX 3000, and the RX 6000 series is even more powerful than we thought. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Apple recently announced their first in-house high-performance processor called the M1, set to debut in their new Mac Mini, MacBook Air, and MacBook Pro. Well, we now have one of the first benchmarks for the new processor, and things are looking quite impressive. The benchmark comes from Geekbench 5, and as you can see, it got a huge single-core score of 1719 and a multi-core score of 6967. Of course, Geekbench isn't the best benchmark for comparing CPUs, but according to this, the single-core score is seriously impressive. I mean, it's comparable to some of the top desktop benchmarks, and when we look, it's actually the MacBook Air that was benchmarked. Of course, as I said, Geekbench isn't that great for real-world performance, and definitely not so much for comparing different architectures, but still, I'm impressed. But first, I've got a giveaway thanks to today's sponsor, iFixit your one-stop shop for electronics repair. And if you're a tech lover like me, you need the iFixit's Manta Driver Kit, the ultimate driver kit with every bit you'll need to tackle any repair or DIY project. We're talking 112 precision driver bits with a huge range of sizes, including really exotic bits. And to top it all off, iFixit has over 65,000 guides for 30,000 devices. That means it's never been easier to fix your own device. And for a limited time, you can get a chance to win one of their essentials kits. Just visit the link in the description for a chance to win. And don't forget to pick up their Manta driver kit down in the description as well. Next up for today, NVIDIA was clearly taken back by AMD's RX 6000 announcement, as the company seems to be scrambling to make some pretty big changes. For one, we already know about the 20 gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti that would basically make the 3090 pointless, but now it looks like NVIDIA is changing the 3060. See, it was originally planned to get 6 gigabytes of GDDR6, but now it's apparently getting 12, at least if my drivers is correct, though Resident Leaker, Copite 7 Kimmy, and Video Cards are saying the exact same thing. In fact, according to Video Cards, Nvidia actually shared a new roadmap to its board partners with the 3050, 3050 Ti, and 3060 set to launch in January, and we've actually already seen some 3060 Ti models appear online. What's really funny about the 3060's VRAM though, is that it would mean the 3060 has more memory than the 3070 and 3080. That's embarrassing. Which means Nvidia is clearly scrambling to compete. Oh, and the 3060 Ti is leaked to only have 8 gigabytes, while the 3050 Ti apparently only comes with 6. As for why, the only reason I can think is that the 3060 Ti was already too far into production, though why the other cards won't change is weird. Maybe Nvidia has plans for those, but given a lot of this was on a new roadmap, I doubt it. AMD likely has a challenger for Nvidia's entire product stack though, so it could be really bad. Maybe Nvidia is just hoping to be first? Then again, that wouldn't make much sense given they'll probably only have two GPUs available for us to buy. Either way, while speaking of Nvidia challenging AMD, it looks like the company is trying to fight the RX 6000 series on every front, specifically with AMD's new feature called Smart Access Memory, or SAM for short, that's set to debut with the RX 6000 series of GPUs. The story originally comes from Gamers Nexus, who tweeted a statement on the feature from Nvidia. And it says, quote, The capability for resizing bar is part of the PCI Express spec. NVIDIA hardware supports this functionality and will enable it on Ampere GPUs through future software updates. We have it working internally and are seeing similar performance results. Gamers Nexus further stated that NVIDIA is working to enable the feature on both AMD and Intel. Unfortunately, they don't know when it'll be released, but clearly the RTX 3000 series will get it. So, with all of that said, something is definitely weird here. See, SAM was billed as something AMD could do specifically because they build both the CPU and GPU. And the second is made possible because of the fact that only AMD can deliver both high-performance processors and high-performance GPUs. We call this new feature AMD Smart Access Memory. 
At least with that statement, it certainly seems to be the implication. Yet Nvidia claims they're able to do it not only on AMD CPUs, but Intel CPUs. Meaning according to them, it has nothing to do with AMD's architecture. Not only that, but AMD requires you use a 500 series board along with their newest 5000 processors. Obviously, NVIDIA didn't mention any chipsets, but given Intel will be supported, NVIDIA's version clearly doesn't require the 500 series. All I could think is that maybe AMD's implementation is faster, but NVIDIA seems to think otherwise. Of course, make sure to subscribe to find out more when it's released. And lastly for today, it looks like AMD's RX 6000 GPUs are even better than we thought. In a recent report, Twitter user Raichu actually shared a now deleted tweet of a screenshot on the 6800 XT running at 2.55 GHz on GPU Z. Apparently he took it down because of it breaking an NDA, which does kind of suck because we don't have a screenshot. Regardless, 2.5 GHz is huge, as it's significantly more than the maximum boost. Oh, and don't forget that it's almost certainly on a reference card, so partner cards will likely do even better. Still, he actually stated that at this frequency, the 6800 XT gets close to the RTX 3090. And given we've already seen the 6800 XT beat the 3090 in a couple benchmarks, it can likely win in others. Not only that, but like I said, AIB cars will potentially get even higher, so the 6800 XT could seriously challenge the 3090. I mean like a full-blown competitor. Let's just say NVIDIA will likely freak out even more when the 6000 series is actually released. So while that does it for today, is NVIDIA in trouble or can they come back with new features of their own? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!